Hello, beloved brethren. In the last video, we talked about 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the gospel. Hallelujah. And in the beginning of this, he said, um, unless you believed in vain, in verse 2. So if you go with me up and read the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians 15, and you'll hear about the um, the the kingdom, and that is in um, the, whenever we put off this our earthly living stone as believers and we uh, go into the kingdom which is a spiritual kingdom beloved and in fact whenever you're born again you're already translated and into the kingdom and hid in God but let's get back to this point so first Corinthians 15 you see um, verse 2 where unless you believed in have believed in vain and then go to verse 12 I think it's in 12 he explains it now if christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead but if there be no resurrection of the dead then is christ not risen and if christ be not risen then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain so we put our our faith in God when we believed the scriptures about Christ and who he is um, and what God did through him and what Jesus did by laying his life down and shedding his blood for us and if you and and God raising him from the dead giving him quickening him by the spirit which is he was the forerunner for us even though he's Emmanuel God with us he did he made an example of what it's going to be like for us that we are going to um, be quickened by the Spirit in the in Christ, and in fact, when you're born again, you already are quickened by the Spirit, right? Your spirit now is in the Holy Spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit, and now He's in you, and you go up and down from here to heaven, okay, to pray to God through Christ, the High Priest, our um, what we call Advocate with the Father. When we fell in something, we always go and and talk to God about it and, and ask forgiveness and um, a righteous person because when you're born again you're now um, perfect before God okay um, doesn't mean that in your life as a believer that you might fall sometimes but you're going to get back up okay he's going to he's going to present you faultless and present you um, before the presence of his glory right and um, so as a believer being hid in Christ and translated into God um, you are saved, all right? And that's how you stand. And having begun in the Spirit, you will finish in the Spirit, not by anything that you do to add to what Christ has already done. Because it says in Revelation, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we become kings and priests unto God and His Father. And um, in fact... When you're a royal king and priest in the kingdom, you can now bring other people in because you're of the good tree, the tree of life, Jesus, okay, the book of life. Your name is written in the book of life. And you are now, according to the scriptures, uh, a part of the kingdom where we can give the great commission and, and bring others in through the door, which is Jesus, by faith on this gospel. All right, and following the dot, we, we follow as a believer who is born again, uh, a child of God. You can read the scriptures now and have the truth yourself. From uh, I always say, for a born again believer, read the the New Testament and then go back to the beginning Genesis, um, because that's how I learned and did it when I was first born again. Um, because we all sinned and fall short of God's glory and we all need a savior be, to save us from that second death from our sins and trespasses so that we can be washed clean and free while we're here as living stones new creatures okay while we're here living stones part of the temple of the living God so the temple is spread over the whole earth beloved in every nation tribe and tongue according to the New Testament in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ we are in all nations, okay? All believers are in all nations. So we each make up a part of the body of Christ. And the Lord in heaven, Jesus, 
Christ, the Christ is the Lord in heaven is our head. We are not our own head. We have to put on Christ, put on the, the, the mind of Christ. Renew our mind day by day as we read the scriptures, a little by little, praying in the spirit, talking to God. He's going to renew your mind. And some people, he's got on a fast track right now. <laughs> They're learning a lot right now. Um, I was a believer for a lot of years. Um, and, and so before I went out every day or as myth, not every day, but pretty much as much as I can to go give the gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying world. Um, and uh, we see here in, in this that there is a resurrection, beloved, from the dead. And Christ is risen. And where is our life hid in Christ? And where is he? He's the Lord in heaven, beloved. So it says in verse 16 that, it, you know, first it says if, if, you know, Christ is not risen, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. And yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. So if Christ be not resurrected, they're a false witness of God, or not, not of God. False witness of God. We're supposed to be true and faithful witnesses unto God, not false witnesses, beloved. So anyone who doesn't have that true witness that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, because that is where we have our righteous life hid, is in him. As it says in the epistle of Jude, we are preserved in Christ, in Jesus, and we are sanctified by the Father. So that sanctification is, is for our holiness you know that is our holiness comes from the creator the the rivers of living waters from the um the almighty all right from uh the fire which is the word of god that's how we get the gift the gift of the holy ghost the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive you know they don't know him all right we're not of the world anymore when you're translated into the the lord into, key, into the kingdom, a cloud of witnesses translated up there into the kingdom, then you're no longer here a part of the world. You are now a cloud of witnesses with those that are already gone before us. All right. A lot of people have been deceived by wolves in sheep's clothing and tares amongst the wheat and goats who have Bibles, beloved. And they are making all sorts of false doctrines. And um, you have to read the scriptures for yourself. He even said that eat your, your bread at home and then you come together with the word. And a lot of brothers and sisters, we come together with the word and understanding that God has given us and we share talents, you know, because God gives us talents. Praise the Lord. Um, and it's his word that we stand on not our own words. And it's even says in the old Testament that the Sabbath during that Sabbath, you're going to not speak your own words. So when Christ speaks in us through us to help another person come to the faith that's in us come to him, Jesus, um, because it's his faith. According to Ephesians six, we carry the shield of faith, God's faith, Jesus, his faith to persevere through the cross, beloved on our behalf and he was thinking of us and thinking of the whole world of reconciling us back unto God and you see what happened in Genesis and throughout the scriptures how hearts were not right or hearts were right people were just before God or they were, which is righteous or people were unrighteous before God he had to give a law because they were lawless <laughs> they were full of lawlessness and sinning um, and so us being in Christ in Christ, we are not lawless and breaking the law. Um, when we um, are translated into him, it's his righteousness. We're in his body, members of his body. That's why when you, when he said you are clean in the scriptures to one of the saints, he's saying, why would you do this wicked thing? You're clean. You're saved. Why would you go back into that? Okay. Um, now that doesn't say that some people aren't going to you know, sin, but in the old man, okay, in that old man that's dead and buried with Christ. It doesn't give us a license to sin and go into lasciviousness, and it doesn't give us the right to go back under the law, bound under law, which is the law of sin and death. That's That could be our hearts breaking the law of God, making a practice of lawlessness, or it could be getting into bondage, trying to law keep with our flesh. 
Okay, Jesus fulfilled all that for us. Now, when we're the righteousness in God as believers, we are walking in righteousness now. And God sees us as royal kings and priests. And he's going to teach us in, as children of God. Um, as he raises, as you raise a, raise a baby, you know, they don't go straight to milk. <laughs> I mean, to meat, they, go, they drink the milk first. Um, the the body of Christ is going to be preserved unto uh, greatness. And the scripture is very clear about that. Um, but because of the wolves, a lot of people don't have the assurance. Okay. And, or whenever people are speaking, um, maybe a truth about the word, they may take it as, as, as people, attacking or putting you under bondage or law and that's simply not what's happening a believer that's in christ is saved by grace through faith it's a work of god not of man lest any man should boast it's not of our flesh we put no confidence in the flesh after that as we're walking as believers just like with israel if they are falling into sin and you see that in the book of acts there were corrections for the body of church the uh, body of christ and um you know, there was heresies among the body of Christ, sadly. So there has to be, we have to speak, the word has to come out so that we can clean all those things up, wash it out of our mind, because it's the mind where we get polluted or the heart, as it says in the book of Acts. Um, but your spirit is saved in Christ. And so God is, is, you know, washing up the mind and the heart in the church right now thankfully, because it had gotten a little bit carried away into all these other crazy ideas or people feeling guilt and shame in the church or whatever. Um, that's not the point. The point is that we are to thank our God, praise him and know that as believers, you are saved and have that comfort that you have entered into the rest. He says to strive to enter into the rest. That it, It's work to, to, to realize that you're in Christ and you don't have to work to be saved, that God saves you and rely on him. And it's hard because people want to um, put work on you or put law on, on you and make you be bound under sin and trespasses. And um, the wages of sin still is death. For a believer in the old man, all right, that's clear in the scriptures in the New Testament. Um, but the free gift is ours forever. Praise the Lord. Um, so I just wanted to bless you with that and let you know that that was what the, the vain part meant. That when, unless you have believed in vain, maybe you had another gospel that doesn't say that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Like the Muslims, they don't believe that Jesus died on the tree or uh, Mormons don't believe Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. There's a lot of different doctrines out there that are doctrines of devils or the Catholic Church thinks you can pay for your sin in purgatory, which is a lie. Nobody could pay for their sin. Okay, it says that the blood of Jesus is for the remission of our sins, beloved. So there's a lot of doctrines of the devil out there. And we're in the end time, <laughs> as God said, there's a time when he was going to say, there's no, there's not going to be any time anymore. So we have to be ready to see our king face to face because he's going to be so glorious. Oh my goodness. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see his appearing because it says in the scriptures that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord's prepared for them who love him. Beloved, he's got mansions for us. Hallelujah. He says he goes to prepare a place for us. We have a lot to look forward to. So I just encourage you, read 1 Corinthians 15 and know that Jesus is the last Adam in the new heaven and new earth. He's like the beginning of creation, like Genesis, okay? It's all new. Hallelujah. He is the last Adam and we all are going to be in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is such good news. Um, and I hope that you received this truth. And that uh, you just talk to God in, in the name of Jesus and know that you are saved, that you are translated in, in, into God, and that it was the love of God that did this and that you stand, okay, in the judgment. Now, the judgment is definitely here. We could see God's judging, but 
judgment and mercy and tr and faith are weighty matters, but they're really good because judgment, the Israelites asked for judgment. And why? It Because it, it made them go on a right path from crooked ways to a right path to walk righteous before God. And if you're walking in that righteousness, you're, you're not breaking the law. Okay, that's just a fact. And then God could say, you know, you're just before me because you believe with a heart, right? And I could give you my mercy, right? He sees that you are his because of what Christ did. Your sins are covered and removed from, from you as far as the east is from the west. Praise the Lord. Um, and so blessed are they whose sins are forgiven. That's what the scriptures say. So you are blessed. And Jesus has blessed his church. He said peace and blessings to his church. Now, he wants us to have peace with all men, if, if at all possible. Uh, but we see that Jesus and the apostles were crucified and stoned and cut asunder and you know, you're not going to have peace with all men because not all men believe the truth. Okay, they don't have faith. They're unbelievers, unsaved. The wicked are unbelievers, beloved. And unbelievers can also mean they received another Jesus, another Christ, and not understanding the righteousness of God and how, how our flesh is weak, um, but the spirit is strong, beloved. So walk in the spirit and don't mortif and mortify the deeds of the flesh, uh, knowing that you are saved. Um, walk in that righteousness. Walk in that holiness, because that's what you are in in God's eyes, in our Abba Father's eyes, and that we have so much rejoicing to look forward to. You know, the enemy they have nothing but pain and suffering coming. They think it's going hell is going to be a party and that it's going to be full of fun and that, that Satan's the ruler of that place. And that's just so far from the truth. Satan's going to be in torment also. There's not going to be any parties. There's not going to be any drinking. There's not going to be any um, glory. There's not going to be any um, rest. That place is a place of everlasting torment and pain and suffering. And we don't want anybody to go there. I, I don't care for anybody to go there. I hope all come to repentance. Um, and faith toward Jesus Christ um, because it's not something that um, it was made for man okay that place of everlasting torment of um, pain and suffering of darkness it says in the scriptures that place was made for Satan and his angels it wasn't made for mankind so it's not a place I want any men, women, or child to go to. So anyways, I just had to put that in so that you could warn people that you know. Tell them, don't go there. <laughs> tell them, come with us. We're going into the kingdom with Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to see him face to face. And we're going to be rejoicing. We're going to have meals. We're going to enjoy each other. Um, it's going to be pleasures forever and ever, it says forevermore all right and his what he has prepared for us um a, a little girl had a vision of it and she said there was like all these beautiful rivers and um, these mansions that were glorious and had our names on it on the mansions so i believe it <laughs> and she described the gold um walls or the gold streets and stuff which is it's very biblical so um I believe it. Anyways, I hope that this blesses you and encourages you as a believer um, that God has paid it all for you um, and he has paved the way for you on how to walk as a believer in the newness of life <laughs> that you have in Christ and that, um, that we should warn everyone to come with us and not to go with the enemy. All right. Agape love to you. Peace and blessings. Bye.